So I want to test the oil pressure switch, which is this unit here. You can see there's a small hole, and what I'm going to do is use a piece of wood from an old popsicle stick to press on the switch, just like oil pressure would. So I have my ohm meter set up, and this one gives an audible sound when there's continuity. So if I clip onto the spade and touch the base, we can see that normally this switch is closed. Now what I'm going to do is hang on to the leads and then press, and you can see that the switch is good because it goes open when I put some pressure on it. And as I vary the pressure, it stays open. So it, it appears to be working just fine. Since I decided to replace the oil pressure switch with a new one, I cut the old one apart so I could see how it goes together. Using a Dremel cutoff wheel, I cut out this piece so I could get to the insides. In the process, I managed to chop up what was the spring which fits up, up in here. The way this works is oil pressure pushes up this little plastic part here and that moves this little piece on top up and down. You'll see this is metal and so is the piece on top. So is the spring and so is the spade. Consequently when this is down, you have electrical continuity all the way through the switch. But when this is up, this little piece is up off the contacts here, and that opens up the switch. So let's see what happens here using the volt ohm meter where we have it on audible to see how this really works. I'm going to clip one part of it to the base. Now I'm going to use this little toothpick to help move the diaphragm. So I have it so the diaphragm is down, just like it would be when the spring was working but no oil pressure. And you have continuity, which means the light on the dashboard would light. Now, if I push under, which would be what happens when the oil pressure gets to about 8 to 10 PSI and overcomes the spring, you see no no continuity so it's open so that's how the little oil pressure sender unit works